What you gonna do with all that junk DNA? Telomeres, promoters, and introns, for example, or other non-coding segments of DNA. So far, we've only learned that DNA codes for things, specifically proteins. So we've learned that, say, you have DNA, it can copy itself by replication, it can then go through transcription, be made into RNA, and the RNA can be read by translation in order to make proteins. That's central dogma, and we've heard it over and over again. However, biologists were super surprised to find out that most of the DNA in our genomes doesn't even code for proteins. And this is, becomes more and more true as you get from uh, old organisms to the newest organisms. So by the time you get up to vertebrates and indeed humans, almost 99% of our DNA doesn't even code for proteins anymore. Where the heck is this junk DNA coming from and why do we even have it? Only a few parts of this mystery have been solved, uh, and we'll talk about a couple of them now and hopefully inspire you to become researchers and to figure out uh, the rest of this mystery. The first non-coding region of DNA that we'll talk about occurs at the ends of chromosomes. So here you can see um, a cell and then the chromosomes inside the nucleus. If one of those chromosomes were uh, zoomed in on really closely, you'd be able to see it like this. Here's the centromere and here's the P end of the chromosome and the Q end of the chromosome and so on. Right at the end, here and here, are segments called telomeres. And if you zoomed in on the DNA that made that up, you would find these repeating sequences, C, 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 A, A, C, 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 A, A, C, 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 A, A. Not going to make a very interesting protein. As a matter of fact, it doesn't code for a protein at all. However, almost all organisms have telomeres on the end of their chromosomes. Why would that be helpful? This page-long article summarizes it pretty well. You can see this is a blow-up of a chromosome right here, and then the telomere is shown in this dark blue. Well, and then here it shows the DNA getting copied, because if cells are going to divide from, say, this parent cell to these daughter cells to these daughter cells, the DNA needs to copy itself. Well, you can see these DNA polymerases hard at work, and they might do a good job copying most of this chromosome. But by the time they get to the end, there are just single strands of DNA that are really hard to copy. Uh, so the copying doesn't always happen very well along the tip. Uh, and so that means that as cells divide, if the copying doesn't go so well on the tip, then that means that for one division, uh, the tip gets a little bit shorter, and then for another division, the tip gets even shorter, and then the tip would get even shorter, and so on. If this were actual coding DNA on the end of the chromosome, that means that these cells would be losing genes, and that would be really bad for the cell. The cell would be losing some of its instructional code. So instead, um, cells make junk DNA on the ends of their chromosomes, telomeres. You can see here's this big protein right here. It's adding some more telomeres, so it's called telomerase. Telomerase has this A-A-U-C-C-C -C -C segment in it so that it can very easily generate this random sequence, T-T-A-G-G-G -G on the end of the DNA and just add more and more and more and more telomere, just total nonsense DNA that doesn't code for anything. And it just acts as a little protector or buffer zone on the end of the chromosomes. So even though the telomeres are quote unquote junk DNA and they don't code for a protein, they still help to protect the chromosome and thus are useful. The junk DNA can also be useful um, to help the cell find where genes start. As you can imagine, looking at this, uh, uh, this is a uh, micrograph, electron micrograph of a chromosome, um, and you can see how what a crazy tangly mess it is, um, and you'd have to zoom way in on any one section of this in order to find the actual DNA inside. Finding where a gene starts in this mess is really hard. Luckily, though, some of the junk DNA provides very clear start lines uh, in the chromosome, indicating exactly uh, where the RNA polymerase should start reading to uh, transcribe a gene. And these uh, start lines of uh, junk DNA are called promoters. So let's picture you're at the start of a gene, and there are three distinct regions there. There's uh, this region over here shown in red, which really does not code for anything that's truly junk. And then over here in green is the actual start of the gene uh, that the mRNA needs to read. Well, then you've got this little section right in the middle called the promoter. So the promoter acts as a start line saying, yo, RNA polymerase, come here and start reading the gene. 
Uh, and the promoter doesn't do it by itself. Uh, it has some proteins to help it out. Here you can see I drew some proteins that land on the promoter. These proteins specialize in recognizing promoter sequences. So, you know, there's a sequence of nucleotides in here that the these uh, transcription factor proteins are like, oh, okay, this is the start of a gene. And so they set up this little landing platform, which then helps uh, RNA polymerase come in. And so here's the RNA polymerase shown in blue, uh, landing on the promoter. And then with the help of the promoter itself and these transcription factor proteins uh, that gets the RNA polymerase all set up so that along it can go on the gene and start transcribing the gene and making that mRNA copy that you can see sneaking up out of the top. Now we've actually seen this before. You may recall from a previous animation where we had this uh, DNA molecule and then there were these little bumpy weird things attached to the DNA molecule. The promoter region is, say, this little section of the DNA, and you can see some transcription factors that recognize sequences in the promoters, and they're hanging out. And then that helped a whole bunch more transcription factors assemble around the start of the gene, and eventually brought the RNA polymerase to the start of the gene. So the RNA polymerase could land there and start reading the correct part of all that DNA and be sure that it was reading something that wasn't junk. So together, the promoters, that region of DNA, and the transcription factors, the little proteins that attach to it, act kind of like an on-off switch for a gene. So when the transcription factors land on the promoter, they help the RNA polymerase come to read the gene and in that way sort of turn on that gene. So even though promoters don't code for anything, they still are useful. Yeah, they're not the coding region, but they do provide a landing platform for the molecules that decode the coding region. So promoters help turn on genes. Now there is yet another source of junk DNA, and it's actually hidden within the coding region of the DNA. So once the um, RNA polymerase is zooming along this DNA and starting to make its mRNA copy, even that mRNA is not in its final draft yet. Let's say the original length of DNA is this long. You can see here's the promoter, and then here's where the RNA polymerase starts reading, and then it goes all the way to the end of the gene over here. Well, the actual final mRNA that gets sent out into the cytoplasm is really a lot shorter. And so you can see there are these portions within a gene, shown in yellow, that aren't even useful. They don't even code for part of the protein. And so the cell needs to go out and remove those segments so that it sends only the useful parts uh, of the mRNA out to the ribosome. And then uh, the ribosome will attach onto this mRNA and it will start reading right here at the AUG start codon. And then it will go all the way in this mRNA until it gets to the stop codon, either UGA or UAA or UAG. Um, so the point is, even inside that coding section, there are these other sections that uh, need to be removed uh, in order for the protein to be built correctly. These expressed parts of the gene, those are the good parts, are called exons. So I remember that. They are expressed, and so they're called exons. And then the interrupting sequences, the ones that are in between and not useful, I call introns, well, I call introns. Everybody calls introns, uh, and I remember that because they're interrupting the good parts. So what the cell needs to do is after it has transcribed its RNA, it then needs to use some enzymes to go in and remove the introns and splice together the exons so it can get that final draft of the mRNA that's perfectly accurate. This is a diagram of what it looks like when those proteins splice out the introns. So you can see if this is a, a long stretched out portion of pre-mRNA as it's called, so it's not quite the final draft, and this intron needs to be removed, all of these proteins right here gather together in a big structure like this and they'll make a loop of the intron and they'll cut out the loop, so here's the cut out intron, and then they'll help uh, the dangling phosphate on this end uh, uh, covalently bond with the dangling sugar on this end, and so it becomes one long contiguous mRNA with just exons in it. So why are the introns even there in the first place? Um, that's one question that's really puzzling a lot of geneticists right now, um, as well as many other questions about junk DNA, like 
Um, how do cancer cells make long enough telomeres to keep dividing? We learned that the telomere is that little portion on the end of the chromosome to protect it. Well, it's going to have to make uh, a really long telomere in a cancer cell if the cancer cell is going to be able to divide over and over again. So how the heck are the cancer cells doing that? Um, and then uh, lastly, there's this question, what about all the other junk DNA? We think that it's junk. But we thought that introns were junk before we figured out what they were. We thought that telomeres were junk before we figured out what they were. So maybe the next generation of scientists will be able to solve some of these mysteries. So please become a biologist, figure it out, and then tell me.